Hello everyone, Mark Anson Audio here. Welcome to my little home studio. Uh, this is going to be the first video in a, a series of videos that I do over the coming months about my transition from using Pro Tools to Reaper. So I've been using Pro Tools for about eight years and I've finally decided that I'm utterly, completely sick of it and I'm going to move to something else. So in truth, I got sick of Pro Tools about five years ago, um, but like many of you, I have, I, all my work and all my sessions are all in Pro Tools. So the 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 idea of moving to another DAW is a very daunting one because you don't want to lose your work and you don't want to have to spend a million years converting all your work work to work with a new DAW. So uh, so I'll give you a couple of reasons, <laughs> a myriad of reasons why I've decided to abandon Pro Tools. So for the record, I'm on Pro Tools 9 and have been since whenever that came out a few years ago now. And I never upgraded beyond beyond that. And there's a few reasons. So for anyone who doesn't know, Pro Tools 9 and 10 were the last two versions that used RTAS plugins. So all the plugins I've bought over the last eight years have been in the RTAS format. And uh, as many of you now know, in Pro Tools 11 and 12, and going forward, they have rebuilt the architecture of Pro Tools so that's 64-bit, which is a good thing. But they also had to make a new plugin format, AAX, so that it would work with the 64-bit operating system, or the 64-bit software, rather. So I, I understand that, how that happens. You know, that happens in, in code. You need to update things eventually. The problem is they've not made it easy for the consumer whatsoever. If anything, they've put me in this really awkward position where I feel like I need to spend a huge amount of money with a, a bunch of different third-party uh, developers to update everything so that it would work in Pro Tools 11 or 12. So here's a little case study. So if you want to upgrade to Pro Tools 11, 12, whatever, you need to buy the license for that. You then need to buy a new iLock. I have the original iLock, that horrible green alien looking thing. That doesn't work with Pro, the new Pro Tools, so you'd have to upgrade that. That sucks. Um, you have to update all your, your plugins. Um, and some companies charge for an update to AAX. I believe companies like Nomad Factory do it for free uh, if you've already got your old uh, license for the old RTAS stuff. But the companies like McDSP, they charge to update. I think Waves charge to update. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, and then you get the other issue, whereas some plugins just are never going to be updated to AAX. So the BFD2... Uh, from F Expansion is what I use to build my drums with it. I've always used that. And all my sessions pretty much have BFT2 in it. However, they never updated BFT2 to AAX, and by this by the look of it, they're never going to. So I could upgrade to BFT3 at like a large cost to myself, because that's an AAX. Um, so what Avid did here is they just when they, they made this new plugin format and said, we're no longer going to support RTAS, um, they put both the, the customers and the third-party software developers in this really awkward position where it's, for the most part, consumers need to pay to upgrade if they can upgrade at all. And some third-party developers will then have to do stuff like uh, they'll they'll change their plugins to be compatible with AAX, but they'll probably feel terrible about having to then charge their consumers to or their, their legitimate consumers for that upgrade. But they're going to have to pay for their their work at some point, right? They can't just uh, rewrite a whole bunch of code uh, uh, for all their plugins and assume that they can give that away for free. That's just bad business for everyone. So so that all sucks, and there's a bit of uh, kerfluffery, kerfluffery involved in all that, uh, which is a shame. But the real reason I got sick of Pro Tools how unstable it's been. So as I've been using Pro Tools for, for about eight years, I think at 7.3, then 7.4, and then finally nine, uh, I've had it on about five different computers and I've never, ever got satisfactory performance out of it. My current computer is a i5, I want to say 4670, which is a 3.4 gigahertz quad core, 16 gigs of RAM. There's a solid state hard drive that Pro Tools is installed on and Windows is installed on. Uh, I've got like a... Uh, a drive for my samples, drives that I record onto, uh, all this sort of stuff. Uh, it is a nuclear powered PC as far as, as audio production should be, right? Except Pro Tools always struggles. It can never seem to keep up with my workflow and, and my ideas. I always feel like uh, I, I have a stupid joke I make about Pro Tools that it's like going hiking with someone who's really unfit and complains all the time. Like, I, 
I just want to go and do my thing. Uh, but it's always complaining, it's always getting errors, it always wants me to change the buffer sizes, uh, it always runs out of CPU power, it runs out of RAM, despite the fact I've got 16 gigs of RAM, that stupid old 32-bit Pro Tools couldn't actually use any more than four of it. And it was just doing my nothing. And the, the breaking point came with the release of my debut EP, which came out uh, a couple of months ago, I think, I can't remember now. Uh, so you can look, at, look for it on my YouTube channel, uh, my band, myself and my, my good friend, Mr. David Sinclair, uh, we go by Light Matter and released the Infinite Mass EP. Working on this thing was an absolute nightmare in Pro Tools. Um, I'd be working on stuff, I'd be trying to put in virtual instruments and then it would run out of processing power. So then I need to sort of manually render out tracks to, to, to take some of the stress off the CPU. Uh, but then my singer would want to do some overdubs, so suddenly... I'm trying to do overdubs when I've got like a 1024 buffer size on, which just never ever works out well. Um, it was just so frustrating and then constant crashes, constant access violations. Um, I was having problems with my native instrument stuff that when it was loading up uh, plugins like in Contact and Reactor, they were just loading up blank, just empty. So like it would open up Contact 5, but there'd be nothing in it, you know. Um, so very frustrating. And uh, I came to the conclusion that I don't ever want to do that again. I want to keep writing music and I want to have fun with it. So I decided to go for Reaper. Um, so the reason for that is it's got the unlimited, well, sort of technically unlimited trial period. It's 60 days, but it's there's no DRM on it. Uh, so you can kind of evaluate it for a wee bit longer if you wish uh, before you purchase a license. Uh, the licenses are super cheap, which is uh, for people like me who are, earn less than, I think it's less than $20,000 commercial from audio production. Uh, you can get a cheaper license, I think it's like $60, which is incredibly reasonable. They update it constantly. And here's the big selling point for me, is just how lean and efficient it is. The, way, the, the download for it is like 9.2 megabytes or something ridiculous like that. Um, like that's like two MP3 files or something to, for, for a whole, the whole, all of Reaper. And... Uh, Reaper does look a little bit like a, like a sort of 1996 bit of software. It looks very simplistic, which is obviously how they've got the file size very low, is they've not put a whole bunch of bells and whistles into the thing. But it is so efficient. Good lord, I've been have, having a blast the last three days writing music. Because I just keep throwing on virtual instrument after virtual instrument after virtual instrument, then guitar, 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 and then keep recording. And I'm always at like 64... Uh, uh, sample buffer size and it never complains never seems to break a sweat never slows down never stutters uh, no glitchiness or anything uh, so it's really reinvigorated me musically like I say I've literally spent like three days just making music and whereas when I worked with Pro Tools I was always jumping back and forth between musician mode and producer mode and then computer technician mode when it inevitably broke down um, so to just be in musician mode constantly has been has been really exciting. I've just I've just got so much work done. Just like the kind of work that would take me weeks to do in Pro Tools, I, I did in a day because I never had to stop. I could just keep going, uh, which has been which has been brilliant. My intention is to make another couple of videos uh, in the coming months to to tell you about how how the switchover is going. Uh, so today I spent a, a, a few hours converting some of my Pro Tools sessions to Reaper. So that's like uh, exporting all my MIDI, my tempo maps, uh, copying plugin settings, that sort of stuff. Quite laborious and quite boring. Um, but, you know, then then I can properly crack on with these these songs in Reaper and really push them and really, uh, really push Reaper and really test it and see how far I can push it. And so far, I've not pushed it far enough yet. It's not stopped or... Or, or choked on me once, which has just been really exciting. Something else that's been really great is that since I always had to run Pro Tools at large buffer sizes, because it always complains about CPU, even, even if the, the, like the system resources thing would say it was using like 15% of your CPU, it would still complain and say that it was running at CPU power. Uh, one of the So I had to always use large buffer sizes, and one of the problems was I'd be recording stuff, and it would always be slightly out of sync, and it was usually too early. And for about a year, I've convinced myself that I have no sense of natural timing. Um, 
pretty much everything I recorded. I had to sort of either like elastic audio back or quantize in a little bit to tighten it up. And I just thought maybe I just suck at my, at my instrument. But the last few days I've been recording some stuff and it turns out I'm, I'm pretty good. <laughs> my, my, my timing is, is, is very good. And it was the, the large buffer size on Pro Tools I was forced to use that was causing that uh, and being able to work at a, a much, much lower buffer size. It uh, allows me to just do a take. And if it's a good take, bam, great, on to the next idea. I don't then have to instantly go in and try and move regions about or, or try and nudge notes in, in time and whatnot. So that's been fantastic. Incidentally, I did try out the equivalent of Elastic Audio in uh, in Reaper uh, because it's sometimes I play really weird stuff that's too complicated for, like, I have musical ideas that are beyond my actual capabilities. So I, I need Elastic Audio and, and the equivalent every now and again. Uh, so I tried out the equivalent in Reaper, which is they're using stretch markers, they're called. Uh, it took me a while to get my head around. It was quite confusing at first. But once I got my head around it, you can actually get incredible results super quickly, like much quicker than it could with Elastic Audio and uh, a lot less messy than Elastic Audio. Um, I always found that Elastic Audio and Pro Tools was one misclick away from completely putting something out of sync and messing it up, whereas the stretch marker thing is, is a lot more elegant and uh, a lot easier to use. Uh, one thing I will say about Reaper is it does make a bad first impression. There is a million menus everywhere, uh, and every one of the menus has so many different things that you don't even know where to begin. Uh, so it's always difficult when you're learning a new bit of software, especially when you're used to something else. Um, and that's made doubly more difficult in Reaper just by the sheer volume of information it, it gives you at any one time. Um, but I'm being patient with it. I'm looking up shortcuts. I'm, I'm Googling things all the time and looking through the manuals and there's like YouTube videos and whatnot, like tips and tricks that I keep trying out. And I'm already feeling really comfortable with most most processes. Uh, the one thing that I, it took me ages to figure out is how to do what I used to refer to as MIDI merge. So like say you record, say like a drum beat on your, your keyboard or on your, I've got like an Akai keyboard with pads on it. You record your beat and then maybe you go back and loop over and then record the snare in, then record the hi-hat in. It took me ages to figure out how to do that in Reaper, uh, but I figured it out now, so that's grand. Um, so it's going to take me a while to, to get used to all the systems that are in play. Um, and once I'm used to it, I'll give you guys the, the, I don't want to say review as such, but my progress switching from the dark side of horrible Pro Tools to the nice, lean, crisp side uh, of Reaper. And I will say that track freezing and faster than real-time rendering, uh, self-hug joy. It is wunderbar. It is just amazing. Um, it, it, makes, <laughs> it makes me feel almost sick with joy when I think about the amount of time that I spent rendering out tracks in real time in Pro Tools. Like, because I edit a podcast, I have a podcast called Zero Life, which you can go at zerolife.podbean.com. I used to edit that in Pro Tools, and if it's an hour and a half long episode, it would take an hour and a half to render. And now it takes like about seven minutes to render, which is just unbelievable. Um, it shouldn't be unbelievable to me, but it is. Pro Tools has conditioned me to, to assume that computers suck, but it turns out computers are pretty amazing. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. I will update you in maybe a month or so about my progress. My name has been Mark Hanson Audio. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've if you've also switched DAW or are thinking about switching DAW, uh, let us know about it in the comments. Uh, so what's the thing that YouTubers always do? Comment, rate, subscribe, and then say goodbye to Fat Spider-Man. Adios.